So uh, yesterday we tried to uh, go for uh, backups. The three types of backups that we did were full uh, differential and transact SQL. So it was uh, the log backup. And uh, now we need to go ahead. So first we can just double check our machines because on top of what we did uh, yesterday, we're going to go ahead and try to uh, use that backup to restore uh, some of uh, you know uh, our databases. So uh, let's get going with this. I hope everyone's machines are uh, up. So just uh, log into uh, SQL Management Studio where you have created yesterday's backup. It was just one of the two SQL servers. So once we're inside, so uh, let's get going. So uh, in my case, I have uh, created that backup or those backups on server three, but I'll just uh, double check that. So let's go to our C drive on server three and check if we have that uh, backup test folder. So I'm just gonna magnify that now. So that backup test folder should be there from yesterday's lab uh, where uh, we were testing our three types of backups. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and try one more type and uh, then, okay. So if uh, we go inside this uh, backup test folder, we have these, uh, uh, you know, with the T-SQL created, uh, uh, with the uh, code created backup as well as from the graphical interface. Then we tried to create yesterday the schedule. Uh, so let's, uh, there was some change that we needed to do in the schedule and uh, uh, let's uh, try to do that now uh, again. So on server three or server two, wherever you created those backups, let's go there and try to um, go for SQL Management Studio. So I'm just logging into uh, the SQL Server where I have created yesterday's backups, and uh, then let's go for <clears throat> the databases. So if you have the database uh, created their backup test DB, um, just co uh, confirm, make sure you're there, uh, you've created that uh, backup test DB backup, uh, or the database. And inside the database, we had created that table. We had made some uh, dual entries there as well for the data. So, um, Yesterday, what we were doing in the previous lab, we were uh, creating uh, automatic maintenance. So on server three, we can continue from there now uh, with the automatic uh, maintenance. And uh, here, so on server three, uh, let's go to our management folder. And when we expand that, uh, we can see the maintenance plans here. So normally, what we use maintenance plans is for uh, you know creating the schedule for those backups. Yesterday we did create a maintenance plan. I think that is also still there or not? Okay, maybe we cancel out from there. So let's just create that uh, maintenance plan here. So if everyone's there, let's just right click, right click here, uh, maintenance plan and then we go for maintenance plan wizard. So uh, just a brief recap, uh, what we were doing yesterday was uh, we created the three backups now, but those backups were created manually. Now we're trying to just uh, check how to create that maintenance plan and how to properly give the timings to each type of backup. And yesterday we talked about the strategies of the backup, how to deploy that backup. Uh, in uh, big organizations. So now uh, if we want to schedule uh, those backups for different databases, so uh, let's just uh, go click the maintenance plan wizard like this. Anyone there? Right? And then we go for this wizard. So yesterday we did try to do that, but uh, uh, maybe we canceled out or we created that or maybe we deleted that. 
<coughs> so click next here. Uh, so let's just uh, recreate, recreate the yesterday, right? Yeah, so this is a little different. So if we have that already, we could just delete that or keep it there, uh, put a separate name here. Because in final exam, maybe, you know, oh, why do I give away everything? Okay, so anyway, um, and backup strategy. Oops. So backup strategy here, uh, but yesterday what we get, uh, went for was, yep. yeah, we did that, we're doing it different today. Yesterday we were, sorry, yeah, so create another one. So yesterday we were not able to correctly do that. Uh, so we had three types of backups. We could not put the timings for them yesterday. So if we, uh, for yesterday's backup or maintenance, for all the three tasks, we had just one kind of timing. So if uh, full backup and uh, you know differential backup and trans log, uh, transaction log backup all happen in one hour at 12 o'clock, that's not uh, possible, right? So there was a mistake there, so I am uh, just trying to correct that. If this question comes to the exam, so you should be actually proving that you know how to give a schedule for all three separately, right? Yeah, you could keep it there and create a new name, give it a new name, or you could delete that. It's up to you. So if the previous one is there, uh, you could delete that and start this new one, or just give it a, another name. So it's just gonna be creating a new one, right? So we're there. <coughs> so maintenance plan, if that was the same name, just change it or just put uh, backup strategy one or two, just to change that name. Uh, otherwise, uh, just delete the previous one and go ahead with the new one. So, but uh, last time what we did was uh, this schedule, a uh, single schedule uh, for the entire plan. That was, we had three plans actually. We we're supposed to have three types of backups. Uh, the full backup is only uh, supposed to be implemented on the weekends. Uh, the differential backup is supposed to be implemented daily. And uh, transaction log backup is supposed to be implemented uh, even half an hour, every half an hour, right? So uh, that cannot be all adjusted in one single schedule. So let's just click that separate schedule for each task here, uh, separate schedule, and then we go next. <coughs> so the three, uh, this is a overall maintenance task wizard. We can just go for all three backups here. Backup uh, database full, differential, and transaction log, which we created already. Let's click next here. And since we did that before, so I'm just gonna go a little faster now. Uh, this is uh, the way it might uh, happen. Oh. Okay, so uh, we're uh, you know we're gonna give different timings. So whichever execute first doesn't matter here. Uh, so next. So when we click next, then this big window open with lots of uh, other configurational options. Uh, first of all, it's asking just like uh, the last time uh, that uh, we're uh, defined backup database full. So we're just going to first of all select which exact database we want to take a backup. Of course, it's the top one, the backup test DB which we created yesterday, right? So backup test DB and press OK. And uh, it's a database, yes, and uh, we will be doing actually a copy-only backup later as well uh, before we start uh, doing the recovery and overriding the same database. So uh, all the only other thing which we did before as well, and we have defined that path already, so let's just go down to the create a backup file for every database. Let's change that path here. Uh, let's uh, click that uh, three dots to go browse to the C drive here, right? So uh, inside the C drive, yesterday we did create that backup test folder. So if we have that already, uh, we can just uh, assign that or uh, actually we created a schedule as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's just give the schedule folder path here and press OK and verify backup integrity if we want whenever it happens uh, so we're going to not define here the time but it will give us the opportunity later to define the time 
right that's where we were uh, yesterday kind of stuck so next then it asks for of course that uh, differential backup it's the same drill now so backup test db here press ok and then we go down to the path here and again in c drive we're giving going through the backup test folder and then going for schedule so that's the same drill here and uh, I'm just gonna go next for the third one as well uh, nothing technical here so that's why I'm going faster a little so define backup for transaction log task right so uh, we can just uh, uh, drop down this as well and go for the same database press OK and for the same path here the backup test folder schedule press OK and next so then after doing this we're just going for write a report to a text file so uh, next here and then just summary here click finish so guys if uh, uh, you're doing this lab or submitting this lab so don't go for the well if you have already sent that it's also okay but uh, you have to submit this one which is the correct uh, way to do it so yesterday is this same lab that was the last 10 minutes or 15 minutes we spent on uh, that is uh, the wrong configuration so click finish here and it's going to be successful or at least make sure that if even if you submit it you don't have to resubmit that but make sure that uh, we changed today the option or configuration in the finals don't go for the previous step uh, when we are uh, you know configuring this or if I ask that uh, quiz question regarding this so it will uh, specifically point to that how do we create three different um, schedules not one single schedule right so click close here and uh, now that maintenance plan backup strategy is created if you already have the other one uh, it should be the different one uh, you can just get rid of the previous one well you would have already done that so uh, right click this let's just give the schedules as well and we just need to know the that if it gives us the opportunity to um, you know give separate schedules for separate types of backups so let's just right click here on the maintenance plan that we created and go to modify here right so when we go to modify now this screen opens so yesterday uh, last time it was just one schedule that uh, was showing here now it's uh, showing uh, three schedules here so uh, we can just type in the description as the backup uh, plan for the week and uh, this is here the sub plan uh, one uh, we can just uh, go ahead and try to click this schedule button here so it says here if we select this uh, sub plan you can see that it is for full backup if you go for the second plan here this says differential and if you go for the third it says here transaction log so definitely we can uh, assign the time of the week uh, and the hour uh, according to the type of backup so uh, let's just go for the sub plan one here and click the schedule for the first one right so when we click that schedule uh, so here it shows like this we can change the name for this so instead of sub plan one we can go for uh, full backup it is recurring because it's a full backup we want it done weekly uh, some companies go for uh, Sunday night some companies go for Saturday night uh, for the weekly backup some even go for the Friday night but Saturday night is uh, we can give that so let's just click the Saturday and at 12 a.m. midnight so this is full backup is always a weekly one and uh, it takes a lot of time so uh, Saturday till Sunday morning it's uh, midnight till Sunday morning this is good so uh, yeah yeah Welcome. So everyone got it? Yeah, here this is new, so I should be going a little slow here. So again, a reminder: uh, time is short now, so 
uh, try to submit all your weekly labs uh, complete successful ones not the half filled labs uh, so please uh, uh, you know I need to mark on top uh, on the basis of what you did on the weekly labs that's important for you to learn this uh, software better uh, so that's why you know if there's a at the end of the lab there's an error that's uh, you know, you will lose marks for that. So, um, so you just revisit your previous labs as well. If you've sent uh, half filled, that's uh, uh, you could just redo that as well. But if it's a long one, just email me. If you have any issue, email me. Right. So, okay, guys. So once we give this, uh, so this is a full backup, and it's a weekly one. So I've just selected this time like this: weekly, Saturday, and 12 a.m. midnight is okay already. It's uh, there. There's no end date. So every week. Saturday night, Saturday midnight, it's gonna happen, right? So press OK here, right? Then, so it now shows here in the schedule, if we just expand that, so it shows that whole time here. Then we go for the second one, uh, which if we select the second one first, it is for differential. So we're just gonna click this schedule for the second one now. Instead of the sub plan two, we can just go for differential backup yes we want it uh, recurring and differential happens uh, once a day or twice a day even so uh, recur recurs every one day so it's a daily one and uh, it could happen way before uh, the midnight or it could happen at the midnight uh, so this is also good this is also okay uh, but different companies have different schedules here. Uh, differential backup could happen at 7 uh, p.m. as well uh, when you know all employees are gone already or midnight is also okay. So press OK here. The only change here is that it is daily and the name is different. So uh, press OK here and then we go for the third sub plan here which is transactional log. So we're just going to go for the schedule for this. Change the sub plan 3 name to uh, transaction log and uh, here it is recurring of course and uh, it's going to be daily as well and occurs every so this is even more recent it has to occur uh, in uh, much more sooner than others other backups so occurs every uh, you know uh, that we can just go for even uh, minutes level and we can just define here 30 minutes so every 30 minutes you're taking backup of transaction logs that will help you to recover your database and uh, if you're not having those transaction logs that's going to be a big problem for you when you lose a database and you're recovering from backup and uh, it asks you uh, for the transaction logs and you, if you don't have it that database will not connect mount so in exchange lab also until we have uh, not uh, you know put back those transaction logs, uh, the database did not mount. So that's, this is the same that goes for uh, SQL Server as well. It needs its transaction logs, right? So this is uh, also very important. So 30 minutes daily, and uh, yes, starting time midnight and uh, ending at, uh, well, by tomorrow, but it's not that long anyway. So let's press OK here as well. So the, this is the way that uh, we are supposed to give a separate timing for uh, our uh, scheduled backups. Uh, now uh, the, uh, the part where we need to test if we can recover uh, the, our database uh, after taking successful backups. So backup part was okay. We were able to just uh, take those backups, but are we able to restore uh, database? So before that, guys, uh, let's just take one more type of backup, which was uh, copy. Actually, there are two more types. Uh, one is uh, the copy uh, only backup. The second is uh, file group uh, backup. So if I go back to uh, those two other types, let me get that slide as well. So what we need to do is uh, 
recovery but before that uh, we need to take one more copy only backup and I uh, think uh, it's not mentioned but uh, there's a little difference between the copy only backup uh, and uh, the normal full backup so let's just go for one more type of backup uh, before we also check the file group uh, backup here uh, so then we go for the restore so if you go back to our server 3 here so if you go back to our server 3 now uh, this is backup test db right so let's just uh, take one uh, more quick backup which is so let's just right click our backup test db where we already took three types of uh, backups uh, so let's go tasks right click the backup test db tasks and then go for backup again so once we click that backup here this uh, general option comes here just select this copy only backup which we did not uh, um, select it uh, did not select yesterday and uh, you know the reason for this is that uh, if we are having a lot of other backups going on so let me just uh, quickly explain that in the diagrams so if we have uh, uh, backups going on on a SQL server which is uh, uh, full backup once the database has to have a full backup then daily differential backup and then uh, transaction logs backup so we can also take if you want to take during the uh, in the middle of the week another full backup for some reason or somebody else take a you know in the middle of the week a backup because full backup is supposed to be weekend right or that's the way we scheduled it's uh, you know uh, not compulsory that we only take full backup at the weekend we can take it in the middle of the week also but if you're doing that then you should be taking full backup with uh, copy only switch or option here now what's the reason for that uh, if in case something wrong happens to the database if you lose the database so what happens here if you took this copy only backup in the you know if you took that full backup without the copy only option here oops the uh, wrong one here if you without the copy only option uh, if you took it in the middle of the week so what happens is if suppose you uh, lose that database now that database is gone and you need to restore that database so when you want to restore the database the database the backup will ask okay where's the full backup so you will say yes the weekend backup is there then you will try to check where are those daily differential backups okay that's also good and then it will ask transaction logs where are those but the main thing is if you ran a full backup in the middle of the week without using the copy only so uh, it will break the chain of these uh, you know full backup which is related to differential backups daily and which is related to transaction log backups so if you take a full backup in the middle of the week and if you try to restore a down uh, database then uh, from full backup to differential it will ask that it will try to recover full backup of the lost database then it will try to recover differential backup of the lost database but it will not be able to access the transaction logs there and you saw that on in exchange class as well if you don't produce that uh, transaction log for any downed database that database is not coming up again and if you had your CEOs or uh, you know the directors or managers uh, data there in the database and it's not coming back up you're in big trouble right so uh, you must make sure that you do not take a full backup without this copy only uh, option during the week otherwise it's gonna break that chain of uh, you know it is full backup is connected to differential backups and differential backup is connected to transaction log backups <laughs> So whenever in the middle of the week you want to take that backup, go for copy only. It's not going to break the chain of these three types of backups. And this chain has to be connected uh, if you want to restore any database uh, 
in case of disaster, right? So you can take full backup, just use the copy only switch with that. So it's not going to break the chain of the three uh, any, you know, compulsory components that are required to recover or restore our database. So uh, let's just go ahead and try to, we were just trying to create a copy backup here as well. So if we uh, go there, so we have now selected that option copy only backup. And uh, here, we are just going for uh, remove this path again. We're just going to give that same path we were using yesterday, but we're going to just change the name as well. So first, uh, check this option, copy only backup, then go for remove, then go for add. We're just going for the same paths as uh, for yesterday's backups. So backup test folder. And once you select this backup test folder, down here, you can just put that name. Uh, so it is backup test db, but it is copy only dot bak. So backup test db dash copy only dot bak. So if you are taking full backup in the middle of the week, which is supposed to be taken uh, at the at, at the weekend, so you have to use then the copy only one. So press OK, so it could uh, be backed up on this path. And it should look like this now here in the path. And uh, well, let's see if it, gives, it goes ahead or if it gives errors. Press OK, done. So back up of database. Just So once it is done, press OK. So let's just check on our in our folder here if it is done. So copy only dot bak is there. If it is there now, we can uh, go ahead and try to uh, restore from our backups. So oh okay, still one more type is left. Okay. Uh, minimize that. Uh, one more type is the file group backup. And uh, we did talk a little about this yesterday as well, but we were not able to do that uh, because, uh, you know, backups are part of your job. If you're not doing backups, uh, I mean, you're, you know, they're going to see what kind of adversary are you. So right click again the backup and go for task. This is the last uh, type. Uh, so go for backup the fifth time. This is the fifth type actually. So now if you go for those backup here, that uh, backup for the same database here. Uh, so this is the fifth time. So uh, okay, uh, file and group. This time, okay, so I'll unselect that. So do you see under the database here file, files and file groups? So files and file groups are used if you want to spread a very big database uh, across several disks. If there's a very big database and you want to spread it across several disks, so you could uh, you know, uh, make, to make the speed of all the, all the data and the tables inside the database faster, retrieval speed, search speed faster. That's why you use files and file groups, right? So if we select this files and file groups now, so this pop-up comes up. And it is just uh, asking that uh, what uh, kind of, there is only one file group here uh, selected, or there is only one file group defined here. Normally, there is one file group only when you uh, out of the box if you just create that database. Uh, so let's press OK here by selecting that only one file group. Suppose there were five or six file groups. So in our file group lab, we did that. We created uh, different types of file groups uh, for the same database, and we placed them on different drives so we could get that uh, utmost performance uh, uh, through the SSD drives for those databases, uh, or the .ndf 
portions of the database. So once we select this file group, press OK. So the, you know what? If there were three or four types of file groups, then it would have shown better. Uh, you know, uh, it would have been understandable that you could select specific file groups. You're not supposed to select all file groups. If you want to do that, then you can. Uh, you might as well just go for the whole database. But if the database is uh, really huge, then we can select any portion of the database, which is a separate file group that you would, you know, specific file group. So if there are five file groups, you would have selected, you would only go for this option if you want to only select fewer file groups. This means fewer areas of the database you want to take a backup of. If you want to go for all file groups, then of course you don't even have to select it, just go for the whole database thing. If you want to select portions of the database, then you only go for files and file groups. So only certain .ndf uh, files or a database uh, you can copy. Here we just have one, so we're just going to select this one, just press OK. So I just selected that uh, one only, and uh, then, but uh, the main thing is we're supposed to know the reason for that. Also one more thing here is options. <coughs> Any. So again, the transaction log area is uh, grayed out. All other areas are also OK. So nothing to change here other than verify backup when finished. General, I'm just going back to general. Nothing else to do. Even if you did not select verify, it's OK. Uh, so uh, the, the main thing is we need to understand the purpose, right? OK, so remove that. And uh, again, we're going to the same path here. Remove, click Add, and define the same path. So this is also the type .bak, but this is db file group .bak. So the question could come also, uh, define the five types of backups or do the labs with five types of backups. So you could just come up yourself what to do. Or pinpoint this video, if it comes this way, or at all. OK, anyway, so press OK here. <clears throat> press OK again and press OK. So uh, it is also successful, but now we have like uh, five types of backups here. Uh, we did not uh, go for the scheduling of the five types, but scheduling is OK for the three already. OK, guys, so uh, now suppose we need to restore uh, database and suppose this database has uh, you know uh, well it has one table so let's just confirm first of all that it has a table so backup test DB if you go for tables here uh, it has yeah one table here so <clears throat> before we go for restore uh, let's just get rid of this table, right? So when we restore, we will know that the restore was successful or not. So we can just delete that table, and uh, then we can see if we can take a backup. Uh, we can take a restore from the backup. Are the backups available? Uh, right now, anyone delete that? Okay, hang on. We will be doing that. Let's just check one more thing here. If we right click on the database here, and task and go for restore here. So you can see that there is database file groups, but if you go to database here for again, rest, uh, right click backup tasks, restore, and database. Right? So when we go to database, <coughs> so it shows here that copy only. Uh, database or the backup we took it shows that there right now so and files if you go to files files are there so I'm just uh, trying to check here all the options are here if you see all these options it's good do not change anything do not press ok just go for cancel just go for cancel here uh, for the restore now the first thing we need to do if you've canceled it out uh, select the table which we created yesterday and right click and delete it 
because we're going to restore from and we're going to be restoring uh, from backup the same database the database is there we can just overwrite that database uh, just to you know uh, check if it restores successfully right so for that uh, right click the table and let's click delete does it delete so I just click delete now and this window opens here and it's just showing that okay uh, this is a table here so if we press OK the table is gone so uh, the database do not have or by accident if it is removed so we can right click and refresh now the table is not there right so if it is gone definitely we have to recover that now quickly so we're just going to go for restore uh, right click and tasks and restore and database so we're going for database directly because there is no table uh, restore although there are some longer strategies that restore that as well but we're just going for database here so when we go for database now uh, it's a database uh, the backup is already here or we can define a device where the backup is so uh, where's the backup I mean like uh, so this if we, if we define a, a device uh, uh, define this device so we can just go to the three dots if we selected the device it could be that backup tape drive it could be that uh, uh, cloud backup it could be anything of that sort if we browse that and add so this is the path where we had those backups but let's just so I'm just showing that this is the path where we could go for backup right so cancel out from here just showing that so that could be an interesting <coughs> well I'm, I keep saying that I don't know why so uh, I'm just gonna <coughs> check some options here uh, before going for okay so uh, if this is the case uh, it's already defined here and the backup is already detected as well the restore to option uh, destination the source is this and the destination is this as well the last backup taken was Tuesday it is recovering it is uh, recognizing that backup as well are we able to click verify here at the end of it so this is already selected right so uh, can we double click that no so can we verify that so if we click verify well it, if it was a huge backup it would have taken a little time but if you click verify it's okay there's no errors there it's intact as per the rules there so uh, second thing is files uh, we do not want to relocate all files to folder we do not want to relocate all the files to the to another folder so we're just gonna keep the files where they are uh, in in the paths defined here but if we wanted to we could have we could have relocated there right because we are overwriting it and we need that table back so uh, that's why we're not going to change this path here options uh, in that options area now we can just have this override the existing database option and restore with recovery and then there is preserve the replication settings with keep replication so if it was being replicated with another database uh, then it would have uh, just uh, shown that uh, you know then it uh, would have just uh, tried to keep the partner alive as well uh, so then we go for another option if you click a drop down here we have restore with no recovery and restore with standby so restore with recovery uh, means that uh, during its you know it's going to recover the whole thing but restore with no recovery means that uh, it's going to keep on uh, restoring until uh, you know a certain time has passed or uh, until the process has finished it's, it's, this is a slower process for uh, larger databases 
and with standby if you select that leave the database in read only mode uh, it's not going to let you make any changes here you know, in the standby if you go for no recovery leave the database non operational it's also not going to let you uh, use this database until it is restoring but if we go for with recovery leave the database ready to use by rolling back uncommitted transactions so it's whatever transactions were going on on during the uh, restore process those transactions will be done once the recovery or re restoration has been done those uh, transactions will be uh, applied so you don't lose any transactions or if the application was trying to write something to the database during the restore those uh, transactions will not be lost in other two cases the transactions will be lost or uh, you cannot uh, connect to the database application or user right so we're just going to go for the first option here restore with recovery and then uh, the other options are restrict access to the restore database uh, so if you select this option as well so as soon as you restore the database and you don't want any transactions to be done there maybe you want to just uh, first discover what what you restored was working fine or not or is that database after restore is really working uh, or intact or not corrupt so we're not gonna check that as well also uh, tail log backup so take tail log uh, backup before restore leave source database in the restoring state with no recovery so tail log backup so yesterday we talked about the tail log as well that it is going to uh, actually uh, keep the okay so there is some uh, hello guys uh, guys testing one two three testing testing <laughs> As there's a class going on, so you know you could talk quietly, right? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, guys. So uh, let's just go ahead now. That applies to that corner as well. Guys. <laughs> yeah. So uh, well. Okay, let's try to uh, go ahead. Uh, the tail log backup just means that copy the active logs uh, as well, which were available before the database went down. So those active logs uh, are supposed to be um, very important if you want to recover a database. But let's see if it lets us even, you know, uh, restore the whole thing. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to restore uh, this database, you know, like overwrite our existing database with the backup we took. And in the backup, we had that table there intact, right? But we just got, well, accidentally deleted the table. Uh, so if that table is there or not, that's what we're going to see after overwriting this same database with the older backup. Now, during this restore, if there are any transactions going on, that's going to be committed later. But then we're not going to lose those transactions as well. Uh, it's not supposed to take any second. I mean, like, uh, it's not supposed to take a lot of uh, time. So press OK here with fingers crossed. So, you know, a live demo, that's the beauty of that. Uh, we don't know when the error uh, just happens. So press OK here and restore is successful. Do we have that table there? So press OK. We do, right? So uh, if we go back to the tables and see, the table is. After refresh, it's gonna uh, you're gonna see that it's uh, not gonna show uh, or it's not gonna auto refresh. So right click and refresh, and then it's going to the well. It's there and we're good, right? So restore was successful. We did get rid of that table, deleted that, and after overriding that uh, existing table, it uh, is recovered, right? So that's what we did in the exchange as well. That we uh, tried to recover that database after we deleted that database and from backup it recovered perfectly after we gave those transaction logs in exchange we went a little uh, deeper there but here uh, it's a simple restore from backup so okay guys 10 minute breaks and then come back or if you don't want to break then we can continue after it's a very yeah, simple of course that's after we have another topic or you want to go huh?
Oh, it's uh, if I tell the topic and you think it's not important, what will you do? So, <laughs> so it's alerts and it's uh, monitoring. It's important, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's resume that now. <clears throat> So this is a, a next topic sequence over agent, and uh, we need to just understand some of the basics for those uh, sequence over agent overview, configuring SQL agent, creating jobs, alerts, and operators, uh, automating jobs here. So just a brief intro of what is SQL server agent, and uh, well, uh, could be an also uh, interesting candidate in the final exam. So SQL server agent allows you to automate a variety of administrative tasks. So the SQL Server agent is SQL Server's built-in job scheduling program, right? Hmm. Yeah, this lab echoes a lot, right? So, okay, let's just uh, go ahead. Now, uh, for SQL Server agent enables you to automate operations by running jobs on one or more systems according to a predetermined schedule. So if you want to automate any job, uh, schedule any job, uh, schedule and automate any job, then it's a, a SQL Server agent that we can come back to and do our uh, tasks there. <coughs> so for example, you can use SQL Server agent to run backups or database maintenance jobs, or you might use it to run nightly extraction, transformation, and load uh, ETL jobs using integration services uh, so some of the data extraction and import jobs you can also do so whatever you want to automate or uh, whatever is repetitive and uh, you have to do that redo that and then you go ahead and uh, uh, automate that job with SQL Server agent we had to start that SQL Server agent for replication because it needed uh, to do that job as well. Uh, you know, SQL Server is told to do that uh, SQL Server agent. So operators, then there is that uh, operator. So first of all, agent, uh, we talked about the SQL Server agent. Uh, let's just go and check out where is that and uh, how, do, uh, how do we uh, configure that. So if we go back to our database here, SQL Server. Now, uh, SQL Server agent, let's just uh, collapse uh, all the other menus here. Management as well. And we see at the end that there's that SQL Server agent available. If we add our other database uh, uh, or other SQL Server as well, it also has that agent. Normally, the SQL Server agent uh, helps in, um, you know, uh, try to maintain a lot of uh, you know SQL servers in one repetition job. So I'm just gonna go connect. Let's just connect and add the second SQL server, server two in my case, maybe in your case, server three. Uh, so let's just click connect here. Database engine. And well, uh, because the name is pretty similar other than this number, so I'm just gonna put server two in my case. In your case, maybe you can put server three here. So I just change this number. Uh, so, and click connect. And now the other SQL server is also added here uh, to this uh, SQL server. And both have this SQL server agents available, right? So uh, we can just uh, collapse the second server after adding that. OK, the SQL server agent is there. Now, what does SQL server agent contain, right? So if we click that SQL server agent and expand that, we can see that there are some uh, other options here. So jobs are there, alerts are there, operators are there, proxies, and then error logs. So these are the areas that uh, you know uh, you could just uh, use to automate any of the repetitive tasks there. So uh, jobs. If we just expand the jobs, there is that database mirroring monitor job. So we did, uh, you know, uh, schedule and automate some of the uh, stuff, and that got uh, created here in the jobs. So you can see that SQL Server agent is responsible then for the running of those. Uh, remember that we had done that mirroring uh, configuration, so that mirroring job was created automatically here uh, because it was supposed to be uh, mirroring one data 
databases and modifications to the other database. So a SQL Server agent is responsible for doing that. Expired subscription cleanup and then the just now what we created was the backup strategy and three backup jobs that we were saying that it should recur. It should be recurring jobs so it will be repeating every week and some jobs every day, a differential backup and the transaction log every 30 minutes per day, right? So all those are done under, uh, and those that job was automatically created here. So reinitialize subscriptions, having data validation failures, and then other replication agents as well. We configured mirroring, we configured replication, so everything was done under SQL Server agent. Hence, interesting quiz questions could come from here. Oh, okay. Maybe. Okay, so uh, if we right click that uh, maintenance plan backup strategy here, so uh, we can just click properties here for uh, backup strategy. So if I just right click the properties here, the general tab for the job. Uh, shows you know which account is it logged in from and what is the category here it's database maintenance category we went for the maintenance wizard and maintenance schedule there so that's why it's a uh, uh, category is already defined but jobs we can define all these types of categories data collector category or uh, database engine tuning advisor log shipping uh, then it, the rest are all replication jobs right so uh, but it has selected database uh, maintenance uh, uh, if you go for the steps of the sql server agent jobs uh, component so when we go to the steps that is that uh, one step showing here uh, type so subplan one type is sql server integration services package and then uh, on success quit the job on failure quit the job so these are some of the steps defined here if i uh, this is selected already if i click edit here So then there are those further configurations for these uh, SQL Server uh, job that we created, uh, the database backup, and configurations, command lines, data sources, uh, execution options, logging. I was just looking for if there was any script in the background used. So if you go for command line tab here, command line tab here, in the general, uh, so you can see here the restore the original options uh, or edit the command line manually so it has the command line uh, showing here you could just get the code from here for all the automated jobs uh, that are going on and you could just uh, make some modification and run that code somewhere else as well uh, if we go for advanced here so this is where how many retry attempts if one fails, but we're just going for quit the job if there, if it fails, and output of on failure action, what do you want, what is action you want to take, but this is already configured here that if it uh, fails, then what do we do, or uh, if it is successful, what do we do. So it is already configured, but uh, the jobs are created for anything that you want to automate, and backups are, uh, uh, you know, we automated them. So cancel out from here. Uh, uh, and we went for the jobs description first. So I'm just going to cancel out from uh, here as well. So first of all, you know, uh, when we are going for SQL Server Agent, we need to check who are the operators and uh, we can define an operator there that uh, if you want to, uh, suppose you're on call in the company, you can just go for operators and define that uh, which email, which person is responsible for these maintenance tasks here. So if I go back to the slide here, SQL Server agent and then uh, operators. So operators are aliases for people or groups that can receive our electronic notification when jobs are have completed or alerts have been raised. So uh, operators, uh, we always go for uh, SQL Server alerts and then we first define operators that whom to inform if 
there is that uh, notification to be sent for any critical uh, task. Maybe the uh, automated job failed or there was some very uh, critical security alert uh, raised there. The, uh, so we need to define those uh, that who's the operator and what is the email address and how to send message to that operator. So the SQL Server agent service supports the notification of administrators through operators. So we need to define an administrator or uh, the system administrator or DBA uh, who is responsible for maintaining these uh, databases. So operators enable notification and monitoring capabilities of SQL Server agent. So uh, we need to notify some person here. So we need to define that person here, right? So operator attributes and concepts. The primary attributes of an operator are operator name and contact information. That's it, right? Nothing uh, here. So name of naming an operator, it could be 128 characters. What's so? And contact information. So how do you contact an operator by email? You can contact or by net send. You can contact. Uh, anyone knows what is net send? Ever use one? Ever use this? Not one. It's the only one here. So net send is a message that shows up if you. Uh, put it so, uh, well. Let me check if it works here inside the server. So if I go to run and just put here net send. I think it's disabled. Net send and the computer name server zero two dash three one one four. I think this is a name. And then I could say hello there. If it works, so press OK. There was no error here, but server two. If I go there, no message popped up here. Normally, message pops up in front of you. Uh, whatever the message, if the message reached there, so NetSend service has to be enabled in the services. Then it works. But anyway, uh, so I just tried to test the NetSend, and uh, we can just uh, Google it as well. How to configure it? It's very basic service to send uh, some messages. So if we uh, go to operators and right click the operator, let's just uh, right click the operator here and click new operator. And here, when we click the new operator, then we can just define that name. Suppose it's the uh, systems administrator. Uh, that's the uh, first operator we're defining. We could just define DBA as well. Email name. So, uh, well, uh, that would be then the uh, sysadmin at gb.ca, which I'm su I suppose is not existing anywhere, right? Uh, just, you know, put a, an email. We don't have a messaging server connected to our environment, so it's never going to email anyway. So, uh, and then, you know, uh, pager email name or net send address, if you want to give that. We don't have net send service available or pager email, even not the actual email. And uh, pager on duty schedule, so it. how do you want that on-call guy? On-call means that, you know, uh, you get uh, every month, one week, you have to be on-call. This means 24-7, you could be called from uh, your company for any problem. So that comes once in a week, uh, in a week, uh, in a month, and it is uh, its rotating job. So everyone gets stuck with that. So uh, well, we can define a schedule here, but we don't have to, and we don't have the next address or page or email as well. So let's go for notifications here, and what kind of notifications or view notifications sent to this user by alerts? We haven't defined that, but some alerts may have been defined. So replication warning, long merge uh, over dial-up connection. So there could there are these typical problems that could arise during the uh, database processing uh, and uh, SQL Server environment. So agent failure, agent retry, some of the common alerts or problems are mentioned here. And if those common problems occur, how do you want it to be sent? So I'll just. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing that, but you know, uh, in the background, I'm just gonna enable the net send service, so at least it could send a net send if we try to create that kind of problem. So thresholds for LAN, dial-up, LAN expiration, 
uh, agent custom shutdown. We can just shut down the agent and uh, or replication agent custom shutdown. So it's all about replication and because we're inside the replication area, or actually replication is configured here. That's why the, some common alerts are showing here. We could just create any kind of this problem and see if NetSend service is working and if it, uh, we can just enable that, but press OK. So what we did was we defined an operator called systems administrator here, right? So <clears throat> now we can go for alerts as well. How many alerts are already defined here? If we uh, just expand this option, you can see that uh, there's a, a lot of, or those all uh, alerts we saw are actually defined here. When we created that replication, uh, it created automatically those alerts for us. So we can just right click that alert and go for new alert as well. So here, uh, in uh, general, we can just uh, uh, you know say that uh, performance is degraded alert. Uh, it could be you know any of those alerts. Performance is degraded, <clears throat> and then. Uh, it, well, all databases check that and uh, you know tell us that if there's an alert. If there was an error number, uh, we could have defined that here. If we uh, know any kind of error numbers there, normally there are huge amount of error numbers and uh, error types. So if we remember any of those, like 1027 is one error or uh, 3462, suppose uh, that's how the numbering is. Uh, you could define that, but severity level, if you go severity level here and to drop down this so it's uh, miscellaneous, uh, miscellaneous uh, system information reserve reserve if we go for these and define our own type but we can go for insufficient permission we can go for insufficient resources here which actually is and then there are some fatal errors in resource that you know the, you lost the database or you actually lost the system itself or hardware error here fatal error so we can just uh, what kind of alert you want to send if performance is degraded so there is that 17 which is insufficient resources we can just select that insufficient resources and performance is degraded is the name so this is how uh, alert could come to you if performance really is degraded and it's going to identify that uh, in the SQL server then if you go for response here so what kind of job you want to execute if this happens right so if you go for execute job, uh, there is that uh, view job option. There, because we don't have any job selected or uh, defined here, if we drop down, there are some uh, jobs that are showing here, uncategorized local database mirroring monitor job, maintenance plan. These are all the jobs that are already going on, right? But if we go for new job here, so suppose this alert does happen. So response, what is the new job? So we can just check here what kind of steps can be taken at uh, what is the schedule of this job and what no notification methods uh, need to be um, you know applied there. So we can go for general and say that uh, it's insufficient resources and under SQL admin it could run category local but we can go for category here as well if we wanted to insufficient resources could be well it's not defined here and we could define categories uh, somewhere else as well or we could just go for those three dots here um, well these are the two categories only we can choose from uh, but we can give a description if we wanted that uh, if the insufficient resources or memory and processing are not available then we can just go for uh, you know then uh, this job should run and inform the assist uh, operator that hey system resources are low get up and go to that server and try to free up some memory try to free up, free up some hard space try to free up some processing uh, so if we go for steps here, then uh, we can define some steps here. So on steps, if you go down here, there is that new button here. And when we go for new, so in the steps, and then new, so there is that step name that uh, uh, in what to do if insufficient resources. 
discovered. So uh, what to do? So transact SQL script. You want uh, to run some transact uh, SQL script or replication merge. You what do you want to do uh, or run as run as what you want to do and uh, on which database you want this to be uh, running. So all those steps could be defined here. If you go for advanced here, uh, go to the next step. If you have defined any other further steps. Uh, log to table that append output to existing entry in table make an entry if there is some performance uh, degradation going on make an entry to the table which table I think uh, we can define that uh, if you log to table append output to existing table and click view here no it's not connected to any tables right now we uh, would have uh, just created those tables here it's going for SMO hmm. okay we didn't define that uh, so let's uncheck that include step output in history run as user so well these are all the advanced steps that we could take but right now what we're trying to see is uh, what do you what steps you want to take so there is some script then put that script here right um, what could we put here so we can just uh, do that uh, create table now create database um hey admin wake up db well we're just testing that right hey admin wake up db and uh, run as is not showing that uh, uh, how do you want it to run as but if we just define this uh, create database and it's a transact sql script so it should create a database called hey admin wake up right so uh, we can just press ok here and let's see if it lets us so yes press ok so we're just uh, saying that uh, create a database when you see that yeah nope I did check and I unchecked that table thing and uh, what to do if insufficient resources discovered type transact SQL uh, and uh, go to the next step so this is all uh, you know defined here then we can schedule as well if we wanted to schedule uh, notifications schedule there is nothing right now uh, notifications uh, we can write to the Windows application log yes we want uh, when the job fails right so when the job succeeds or when the job completes notification we can just define this right now otherwise definitely we define an email there a pager or a net send and automatically delete the job well we don't have to do that but we can just go for write to windows application event log and targets what is the target here which server are you trying to run this job on so target local server is already defined here but we haven't defined multiple servers here uh, if we define that uh, then uh, we can just uh, those servers will appear here as well right now it's the local server so what are we trying to do here we are defining a job insufficient resources if it happens then do what create a new database here and uh, so press ok here if we have done all those all that stuff so press OK so we defined a job here insufficient resources and it, it says here insufficient resources uh, we can also say that notify operators but it's the same thing either you use email pager or net send but we don't have those uh, working um, there is just one operator defined but we can define three or four guys here as well if we had created those operators if you go to options here again include alert error text in email pager net send definitely we would have defined that if we had those services available so alert is here performance is degraded and it is severity is 0 17 uh, and it happens on uh, all databases SQL Server event alert so let's just press OK here nothing here so we just create a new alert here which is performance is degraded it shows here right 
so some thresholds in the background uh, are defined here. Uh, we can check or run a script of our own to actually degrade a performance and check if in, in response something happens or the job runs and uh, a database gets created or not. So I got that script from uh, some forum here and this script uh, just creates 2000 transactions and uh, it quickly does that and uh, let's see if it degrades the performance of our database and uh, we could just run that again if we want uh, to just you know further degrade so we already have that test database bk so i'm just gonna copy this uh, script to you so it's gonna create a table called db table then it's going to make 2000 20000 sorry not 2000 20000 transactions there that should degrade the performance of this sql server hence raising that alert i hope it does work so uh, i'm just going to send that table in the email or resuming now so i've just uh, emailed you in the uh, sql uh, google group that uh, a script the script so if I go uh, if I copy this script and go to so we're three here and then um, open that new query in fact let's open it with that database so if we right click that database backup test DB right click and go for new query so it will open right away in that database There's a new query on the left side. You should be making sure that uh, backup test DB is there. <coughs> and paste. So this is the whole script, the first, uh, uh, you know, uh, test database BK. Oh, backup test DB, sorry. So just first of all, check that this on the top uh, backup, the correct database name is there. Backup test DB. Second thing is create a table and inside the table create one column here and inside that one column then create those uh, 20,000 transactions. Uh, so I'm just going to go for use backup test. So first of all select uh, the uh, top one and uh, execute. So it uh, on the left side now we're working inside this database backup test DB. Second is so we're just going to give a space here and uh, go ahead and uh, execute the rest of the script here so until the go here in fact uh, select from table also just select uh, execute the whole thing f5 and uh, if you go for messages here you can see that uh, it is still executing 100 percent and rows are affected if you keep going down here that's a lot of rows created it is supposed to create 20,000 rows so it result is that it is now showing those in one column it has created if you go down that 20,000 is created so uh, we can just uh, f5 that again that's crazy yeah, uh, and again there is already object name uh, db table in the database oh yeah uh, so it's not gonna do that again unless we just create a new table the db table one but I could have created a loop there as well and just uh, now second table it says created that well, uh, if there was a performance degrade, what job we were, uh, you know, defining there that create a database called Hey Admin Wake Up, but uh, it's just kind of, uh, you know, a test. It might work. It may uh, work. It may not work. So there is no Hey Admin uh, Wake Up. So the thresholds were not reached or. Uh, we need to just check further but this is how you know we try to at least create that uh, uh, degrade in performance and uh, we try to give a job that if the performance is degraded go for uh, that uh, you know message that uh, creation of our database 
so but uh, I think the degradation uh, degradation is not to that level that it can create that uh, I just created the third and fourth table quickly and selected the whole thing uh, f5 and uh, now two tables are being created so I just created something quickly but uh, if we refresh the databases here Nope, so the job did not uh, execute. And the job was uh, insufficient resources. Well, we, we that's, this is how normally what hap is supposed to happen if we have an email or messaging system attached to it. Uh, we should have uh, received an email or a net send service was enabled in the background. We should have in, uh, you know received that. Uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, you know th there was that job did not execute. If it did not, then uh, also we don't have that hey admin wake up database created uh, so well this is uh, how we can just create those alerts uh, and by uh, defining the alert by defining in the SQL server agent the jobs the alerts and then the operators as well uh, one more thing we defined there that uh, if there's a degradation in performance go and uh, create that event in the event log so I'm just gonna go to that event log here uh, start administrative tools and to the event viewer start administrative tools and event viewer maybe there were some events created for performance degradation so if I go to Windows log here and go for application um, in application so there is application log is uh, 442 this is current the software protection no not this so if we if I keep going down here software protection service was completed initializing status for service objects nope not this if I go a little more down it created a lot of information events only MS SQL server related <coughs> backup was successful yeah that was happening at 347 now just now what we did is there's no event created as well I think uh, so major installation succeeded available cluster that's like way back 429 Nope, no event was created as well. If there are any SQL server, so SQL server also creates some events there. And uh, if we go to the, you know, that management studio here, error logs. So current is so there are error logs here. So if I double click that. An idle CPU condition has not been defined. Database mail is not enabled for agent notifications. So that was created at 313. Nope. So current one is this. So yeah, no uh, event restore database. Yeah, we restored successfully. So that event is there. Backup. So yes, that's uh, so nothing current has been uh, created. So well, uh, we get to know the you know the, that under SQL Server agent, this is uh, alert agent and jobs and operators, but we uh, were not able to create that kind of disturbance. So uh, this is just a, a brief introduction to that, uh, and uh, you know a very favorite topic uh, for quiz questions. So uh, let's uh, so that guys, that's it. Let's just uh, try to get our weekly labs uh, and uh, send those weekly labs next week. Uh, if uh, you know, I was told to get uh, you know, do that uh, uh, review of uh, what we have covered in the uh, you know that whole course as well as uh, some topics if I want to. But what are we expecting in the final? That's what I'm supposed to tell. So, but there will be some other topics as well. Uh, you know, smaller ones. Uh, so, okay.
over and out. 